Antennas. We love talking about antennas, don't we? At least I think we do. So let's just talk about antennas. Aerials, antennas, whatever you like to call them. We've been talking about aerials on this channel for quite a while and I make no apology for coming back to the subject again because it's a very topical subject. You know, aerials, if you talk about aerials, there's a mixture of facts, truths, myths and opinions. It's a very wide topic. In many respects, it's very difficult to analyse antennas, particularly when we're talking about antennas in the suburban garden. There are so many different aspects that affect the antenna, not least of which, of course, is can you fit the antenna into the garden? And then what about the surroundings? What about the bands you want to cover? And what about the cost? Well, I've been through all these experiences myself over the years, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a vertical antenna, basically a simple vertical antenna that you can erect in your garden, or in most gardens anyway, and that is quite effective in terms of its performance. Now, vertical antennas, there's a wide range of vertical antennas, there's a wide range of commercial antennas, a wide range of designs and choices. But the thing in common is that it goes straight up in the air. And the fact that it goes straight up in the air means to say that it doesn't take up an awful lot of room. Well, at least that would be the case if that was the only part of the antenna. But of course, there's another part of the antenna. There's the ground, the radials the counterpoises. Verticals have always been a popular antenna for two reasons. They don't take an awful lot of space and secondly they're very good for DX or at least we're told they're very good for DX. Now my first antenna was a high gain tri-bander covered 10, 15 and 20 meters and I put it up on the side of the house and I had two radials for each band. Now, this is important. The reason it's important is because in those days, it was quite common to put the antenna up in the air, the vertical antenna up in the air, and to attach to it radials or counterpoises, whatever you like to call them. And those radials were resonant on the bands of operation. So I had two radials for 10, two for 15, and two for 20. And I happened to erect this antenna in 1960 when we'd just gone the peak, just gone past the peak of one of the most, um, well, one of the best sunspot cycles in recent times. So it was a happy combination of a vertical antenna, didn't need any rotation, omnidirectional, um, low angle radiation for DX, and great conditions. It almost became the accepted way of in uh, erecting a vertical. And if you were really stuck, then you would put it on the ground. And it was common knowledge that you could put a vertical on the ground, run out some radials, and it would work as well. But a lot of stations in those days seemed to erect their verticals in the air. And there was a station not too far away from me who had his vertical up at around about 30 feet. And I don't know how many radials he had in the air, but he had quite a few. And he regularly was working the DX and I was always amazed at the performance he got from his antenna. I, I didn't quite achieve that performance, but I could hear most of the DX that he was working. Well, today things have changed a bit. It seems to be much more common now to erect a vertical antenna at ground level. And I think this is understandable because it, um, it, it's a convenient way of uh, erecting it. You don't, you don't have to have a mast. And with small gardens and uh, planning restrictions, you can often put a vertical up in the garden without worrying too much about planning permission, particularly if it's a, an antenna that covers, say, 20, 15 or 10 metres, or maybe a tri-bander like that. It doesn't take up too much space at all. Now, as many of you will know, I do a fair amount of portable operation. And I've tried various antennas. I've tried horizontal wires and I've tried 
tried verticals. And in the last uh, couple of months, I've been looking again at vertical antennas just to see whether that might be the best option for portable operation. Because with portable operation, you want to quickly be able to uh, assemble an antenna. So I decided to look at verticals. And when you consider verticals, there's some interesting opinions, shall I say, um, that uh, are worth considering. Now, we're, we're told in some of the literature and some of the websites that uh, 120 radials would be the ideal. Well, they may be the ideal, but they're not really practical, certainly for portable operation. And then further on you will read that in fact, 120 radials was derived from the medium wave vertical transmitters and that for normal amateur HF operation on the, on the frequencies that we operate on, you don't need 120 radials. And then there's the question, should they be a quarter wave long? Uh, a quarter wave, of course, on the ground is not the same as a quarter wave in the air. And do shorter radials do just as good a job? And is it better to have more short radials than just a few long radials? And then you find that if you have one radial and on the ground and you add three more, you get sort of four or five or six dB increase. Now, I don't think it's too difficult to imagine that the more radials you put out, the better the performance. But I think it's common knowledge now that the law of diminishing returns quickly takes over. If you've got four radials, fine, the antenna will give a reasonable performance. If you double those radials to eight, you probably won't notice too much difference. You've probably got to multiply it by a factor of four before you actually determine the difference. And in fact, how do you measure the difference? How do you measure the difference between two, three or four radials and 24 radials? Uh, unless you rig up a, some sort of switching system uh, and have, uh, have enable you to do a quick A-B test, you can't really test it. And if you upgrade your radials from four to 24, um, how do you actually tell the difference? Do you go on the air, do you have, give it 10 days, 20 days, 30 days? And can you remember what it was like before you put those extra radials on. So it's a little bit of a minefield. Now we're also told that just driving a copper stake in the ground is no good at all. Well, in fact, it's not to say it's no good at all. It does work, but it probably doesn't work very well. But nevertheless, it does work and I've used it myself, so I know it works. And here we come to probably quite an important point is that very often, you can theorize about these uh, difficult, d different antenna systems, and you can even model them. But really and truly, unless you try it out physically, you don't really know how well it's going to work. And then I came across a document uh, on the internet uh, published by StepIR, who manufacture um, a range of, of uh, Yagis and also um, several vertical antennas. And they come up with a statement that two elevated radials is just as good as 120 ground-based radials, buried radials. Well, I find that hard to believe. And it has been challenged in other literature. But here again, we're, we're into the area of opinions. Somebody says that two elevated radials is as good as 120 buried radials. And then somebody else says, well, no, that's, that's nonsense. Well, I find it hard to believe that just two elevated radials is going to be as good as 120 buried radials. But maybe it might be better than perhaps four or six radials. So I set out to try and see whether elevated radials would work for me. <laughs> Before I talk about this antenna, let me just give you a bit more background information. I have always had a vertical antenna and a horizontal antenna in uh, my gardens. And I've had several gardens over the uh, years. <laughs> uh, the horizontal wire has always been around about 25, 30 foot above ground, so nothing really high. And the vertical antenna has always been ground mounted. 
I have almost always found that the vertical never seems to beat the horizontal wire. And in fact, very often the horizontal wire is better than the vertical. Now, you would expect that to be the case on the sort of short skip signals, um, sort of uh, into Europe and so forth. You'd expect that the horizontal wire will work better than the vertical. And in fact, it does. But then when you get to the across the ponds of the States, and then you get to the west coast of America, and you still find that there's not much difference between the vertical and the horizontal wire, you begin to wonder. And then when you talk, when you talk about or listen to um, Pacific signals, uh, signals from the Pacific Ocean, and the vertical still doesn't seem to have much of an edge, if anything, on the horizontal wire. It's a bit of a puzzle. And then to complicate matters, I've found that short skip, really short skip signals that you get on 20 meters sometimes, uh, where you can hear stations in the north of England and so forth, are very often better on the vertical than the horizontal wire, which seems to defy logic. Now, whether that is to do with the polarization of the signals as they arrive, I don't know. But I have found that on many occasions that the only benefit of the vertical antenna is on very short skip signals, which is a bit of a puzzle. But why would a vertical not perform as good or better than a horizontal wire, particularly on long distance DX? Well, I've come to the conclusion that it's because it is ground mounted in a suburban area. Now, it's all very well to see demonstrations of vertical aerials in a field with big open space and sky all around. Then probably it works very well. But I think in the suburban garden, when it's ground mounted, it has to fire through all the obstacles. Your house, somebody else's house, trees, telegraph poles, pylons, other structures. And I think it's, it's a bit of an education. If, the, if it's on a sunny day, <laughs> the ground is dry. If you were to lay on the ground and look up at an angle of say eight or 10 degrees, you wouldn't actually see much sky at all. And I think one of the problems with vertical antennas is that there is a certain amount of absorption. There must be, because otherwise my vertical antenna on DX would work better than a horizontal wire. And talking to other stations, I've heard this as well, that if you've got a just a typical suburban garden, the vertical doesn't seem to work quite as well as you'd imagine it to be. That's my experience. So this perhaps is an example where you can model the performance of a vertical antenna. What you, what you can't really do is to plunge that model into a typical suburban garden and really, and really ascertain what, if any, the attenuation is caused by all the surrounding objects. So this really is what prompted me to experiment with a monoband vertical antenna using the elevated radial system. And I've been trying it out over the last month or so. Now the antenna that I decided to use was a 20 meter vertical, which has a five meter long element. I have got a spider pole, which um, I decided to use as the means of support. And I decided what I would do was to elevate the antenna to a height of around about five or six foot above ground. So the base of the antenna would be five or six foot above ground and I could attach to it radials. And I decided to try the two radial system. And I, I reckon that this probably would be quite a simple system to erect when I was out portable. So I set about erecting it in my garden. Now the spider pole, by the way, is something that uh, uh, we sell uh, at Portsmouth. They've recently introduced a mini spider pole um, which is seven meters tall. Now seven meters um, would easily support a 20 meter vertical element and enable you to get it a couple of meters off the ground. And it's not overly expensive. I think the current price is 69 pounds. It's very compact, very easy to telescope out. And uh, I suggest you take a look at it on our website. So let me describe in more detail the antenna and so forth. The spider pole is great mast, great telescopic mast. I've had my spider pole now for about 
four or five years. Um, this particular one I've had for four years, it's got some battle scars on it, but it still works just as well as it did when I first purchased it. And I've been using it both at home and out in the field for portable use. It's very versatile. So let's take a look at the spider pole and perhaps see how we might use this pole. As I said, it's fiberglass. This is made in Germany and it's very strong indeed. And there are some cheaper ones on the market, but I would recommend it's worth paying that little bit extra just to get the quality. It's telescopic. If I tip this here, you'll see the mast sections coming out. And I'll give you a closer view on the camera so you can see these sections as they protrude from the top of the mast. If you look closely here, you'll see that I've used a hose clamp on the top here. This is just a means of um, providing an anchor point for a wire that I attach to the top of the uh, mast. Now, I've removed one section because this is a 12 metre mast and I think the top section is a bit flimsy for my use. So I've removed the top section. It's very, very easy to do. Let me show you. If we look at the bottom of the mast, you've got this rubber cap to hold everything in place. But you can take that off. If I take that off and now I'll tip the antenna, you see that all the sections are available and you can take sections out. So you just use the sections you need. Now you see that there's a sort of a, a rough piece. That is the bit that actually locks when you... Uh, telescope the mast out but you can pull the sections out so if you wanted to just use perhaps uh, the top section you tip it up here um, you take out um, perhaps the, the large bottom sections and you have a smaller mast so it's very versatile like that so how does it lock in place well actually each element each section is got a slight taper to it and if we push the section in there there's a slight movement, you can hear it rattling about because this section is slightly smaller than the inside diameter of the next section. But as we pull it out, so this section expands until we get to a point where it effectively jams because this section now is getting a bit bigger than the lower section. So we just pull it out like that and it's, it's locked. That will, that will support itself. If you wanted to make that permanent, you put a hose clamp around it. But if it's just for portal work, you just pull it out and leave it. And when you're ready to pack it down, you give it a bit of a shove like that and it will go back in. It's that simple. Now it's quite amazing. I've just done about five or ten minutes of this video and somebody next door but one has decided to cut trees down. So we've got a chainsaw burbling away in the background. So I hope this recording is going to come out okay. But to extend the antenna, it's very easy. You just pull the sections up one after the other, just like that. I'm probably up to around about 20 feet, 25 feet. Getting up towards 30 feet now. Whoa, we've nearly hit the clouds. The great thing about it is, it's that easy. And it's even easier to telescope it down. Let me show you. Clever is that? Now, how heavy is it? Well, I'm no weightlifter, but look, I can hold it with one hand, easy. There's no problem at all, with one hand, and uh, it's great for portable operations. So, a very versatile mast indeed. German made, tough, and it will last you a long time. But I'm also going to use it in a practical test. I've just used some upper sections of the spider pole, attached it to a tripod, and here you can see the two radials at the base of the antenna. The radials start off at around about 10 centimetres above the ground and rise up to just under 2 metres to the base of the antenna. To connect the antenna to the coax, I use the spider RCB box, which is a very convenient way of doing it. There are terminals either side for the radials to be connected and then the antenna goes to the top of the box and it makes quite a, a neat installation. 
The antenna itself is five metres approximately. You will need to check that using a VSWR meter or analyzer, but it's approximately five metres, a quarter wave on 20 metres. So just to recap, we've got a tripod supporting part of a spider pole, which is around about six or seven metres long. I think I used the top section and We've got the radials connected around about two meters above ground. And then above that, we've got our vertical antenna elements, which is approximately five meters. So five meters of vertical elements. The radials are approximately five meters long. Just measure them the same length as your vertical and you uh, would be okay. And uh, then we just connect 50 ohm coax to that. So the center pin of the coax goes to the vertical part of the antenna and the outer sheathing goes to the radials. Now my first contact was with LZ7CW. Um, it was a pretty quiet uh, 20 meter band. It was after dark and uh, his signal popped up and I gave him a call. Unfortunately, he sent me a recording of my signal um, as he received it on his transceiver. I was running 100 watts. I think he was running two or 300 watts into a linear but it was a good contact, good five and nine contact. I'll just play you a little bit of it and you'll hear me swap over from uh, my recording here um, at home uh, to the recording that he made of me in Bulgaria. I hope you follow that. <laughs> yeah, okay again, um, Vic, LZ7CW from Golf 3, Oscar, Julian, Victor. Yeah, fine copy there. Uh, yeah, you're still, uh, you're still uh, holding up okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't operate on the band that much. Conditions are on at 20 meters, but uh, uh, well, I'll keep an eye open for you. And if you're around um, uh, this or this part of the band, um, I'll, uh, I'll chip in and give you a call if you're not uh, too sort of involved in other QSOs. Um, it's coming out of a sort of certain certain area. That was a five and nine contact both ways with Vic LZ7CW. It was good contact and that was made with the antenna in the garden just as you saw it. The next uh, thing I did was I took the antenna out to uh, on a portable site. Uh, I've got a, a small motorhome and so we went out onto a campsite for a few days in Suffolk and it was horrendous weather. Uh, it was very, very windy. Uh, very difficult to put an antenna up um, for the first two days, uh, but on the third day I was there, I did manage to get the antenna up because the wind abated a little bit. So here's a few shots um, of, uh, or a few clips um, of the, uh, uh, the video that I took there. Well, I've set up at the campsite, my favourite campsite here in Suffolk. Um, it's a nice sunny day, but it's incredibly windy. So apologies if you're getting some wind noise, I set up my vertical antenna, 20 meter vertical. I haven't extended it as high as I wanted to. I'm one section down because it's very windy. So there's a little bit of a slack on the driven element, but basically we've got the quarter wave vertical there. I've got a couple of radials running down here. They're not um, 180 degrees. They're more like 90 degrees, but that was the best I could do at the moment. We had, <laughs> We had a tremendous amount of rain last night, incredible amount of rain, and it's still very windy, so uh, operating under sort of slightly restricted conditions. But radio conditions not bad. Uh, this morning, about half an hour ago, I just caught the tail end of the VK opening on um, 20 metres. That was quite a good opening to uh, Australia on 20 metres. Unfortunately, I didn't get up early enough to catch it, but uh, I've got a brief recording here of uh, a station in Spain um, just uh, catching the tail end of the opening on um, 20 metres to uh, VK. But the antenna works extremely well. I'm convinced that these raised radials are very good. In fact, I think we knew that anyway, but I hadn't tried them out for a long time and it really works extremely well. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. During my time at the campsite, I used the Discovery TX500 10 watt transceiver for all my contacts and it fits very nicely on the dashboard, as you can see, and I had some very good SSB contacts. I'm running a vertical five meter tall vertical antenna exactly the same as you but you have more power HI 
So many thanks for the QSO and appreciate you coming back to me. From George 3, Oscar, Japan, Victoria, 73. So in summary, how did the antenna work? Well, it worked very well, actually. <laughs> I was uh, very uh, impressed with the uh, performance. I've uh, been running that antenna in my garden now for about a month, and certainly I now notice improvements in the signal strength on DX signals, particularly um, from the Pacific. I've been listening to some VKs recently, and they are audible on the vertical, but they're not audible on the horizontal wire. Um, they're not great signal strength, but they are there. The, 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 there's definitely an improvement. And um, of course, conversely, if it's uh, close in signals from Europe, then of course the horizontal wire um, works. So it's to me, the reason improvement, having elevated radials does provide an improvement. Now, I've gone for uh, the base of the antenna around about two meters above ground, so you get a bit of an angle on the radials. Of course, that is really more, it's becoming like a bent dipole, really, rather than a vertical with um, a horizontal radial. So uh, there does seem to be some benefit there. Uh, VSWR is about 1.5. You won't get much below that because the uh, feed point impedance is, is low, but it does work. And I think for portable operation, it's quite good as well because it's no... Not, no great hassle to just put the antenna up and run out a couple of radials and put tent pegs in at the ends of them. And likewise, if you've got a small garden, um, you may not want to dig your lawn up, you may not even be able to dig your lawn up. Uh, you may have concrete or whatever. But it's no great pain, or no great hassle to just run a couple of radials out, uh, fasten them down, um, go on the air for a couple of hours and so forth. And when you're finished, just pack the radials away. Um, and if you've got something like the spider pole, you just <laughs> collapse it down. So it's a, it's a very uh, um, sort of pop-up type antenna. Anyway, I hope it's been food for thoughts. You don't need to copy this exactly, but it may give you some food for thoughts. Downside of the radials is they are resonant, they're part of the antenna, but does that really matter if it gives you an improvement? So thanks for watching this video, appreciate that. Um, spider poles, we'll be happy to supply you with a spider pole. Don't forget the mini spider pole, um, which is quite nice. It's only seven meters tall and we go in the boot of a car very easily. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and appreciate your support. And, uh, and here's till the next time. Take care, enjoy your ham radio. Bye for now.